Well, it looks like Joe Biden's getting some backup in his war against the Second Amendment. His pick for Attorney General, Judge Merrick Garland, says he'll have Biden's back when it comes to pushing major gun control policies. Take a look. Do you support banning, banning of, of certain types of firearms? The president um, is a strong supporter of gun control and has been an advocate uh, all of his life, uh, uh, his professional life on this question. The role of the Justice Department is to advance the uh, policy program of the administration as long as it is consistent with the law. There is room under the law for the president's uh, policies to be pursued. Then I, I think the president is entitled to pursue them. Joining me now for reaction on that and much more, Jack Carr, former Navy SEAL and author of The Devil's Hand. Jack, thank you so much for being here. So we'll just get your reaction to the potential new attorney general, and then we'll talk about some other things. Sounds great. Thank you so much for having me on. Now, uh, my friend Chris Cox recently reminded me that the real tragedy here is that we're even having this conversation about Second Amendment sanctuary cities, because mm -hmm. these rights, in particular the Second Amendment, was paid for in blood by those who sacrificed their lives, their fortunes, their sacred honor, so that we could enjoy the freedoms that we have today. And these are natural rights. They were very clear. Our founding documents were very clear that these are not rights given to us by the government, and therefore they cannot be taken away by that same government. Now, in the military, we raise our hand, we take an oath, and we swear to uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic. We don't get to choose which part of that Constitution that we want to uphold and defend. And then we go into battle, sent there by politicians who take a very similar oath to uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States. They put their hand on a Bible, for the, for the most part, and then in their very next breath, their very first acts, are uh, go to subvert that and restrict these rights mm -hmm. and consolidate power at the federal level. The irony, of course, being that they are feet away from men and women who are defending them with the very tools that they seek to ban for the rest right. of us. Right, exactly. And the White House's response to a record number of new gun purchases last year is to restrict them, and they, they put them in the same category. They talk about, quote, gun violence, and then put in this new 8 million new gun owners as if they bought all of their, their new guns illegally when it comes to their overstep and wanting new policies. And President Biden has said he may implement some new executive orders. But you mentioned these uh, Second Amendment sanctuaries all over the country. And I think that's really the key point here, is communities all around the country saying, no, you're not going to impose on my liberties. You're not going to impose on my natural rights. You have uh, sheriffs in Missouri saying that they will arrest anyone who violates a citizen's gun rights. Uh, Arizona is looking to shake up their gun laws. You have uh, Fort Fairfield becoming a Second Amendment sanctuary. And these are, not, these are just a few examples. This is happening all over the country. That's right. So those three states, counties in those three states you just mentioned, um, are, are amending their constitutions to guarantee the, the right of the people to keep and bear arms. Now, uh, it's largely symbolic in that in 2009, uh, Montana, the uh, county of Montana, did something similar. Uh, it was uh, not upheld by a federal court. But it was interesting, an article by Cam Edwards recently said we should use the, uh, the California Sanctuary City Act that mm -hmm. makes it harder for law enforcement at local and state level to coordinate with, in this case, the federal government. So there's some ways there that we might be able to explore uh, on that front. But very telling that the press, uh, White House press secretary has asked about two million gun sales in January. Now, those come from background checks. So, legally acquired firearms from the background checks, and it's still a problem for this administration from a, a president who has been uh, surrounded by government funded. Uh, security since mm -hmm. 1971 for the last 50 years. Yeah, that's also an excellent point. And you're an author. You think the First Amendment is very important. Can you explain why the Second Amendment is just as important as the first and all the others? That's right. So the, uh, I have a, an article coming out called The Moral Vanity of Censorship, and that applies to the Second Amendment as well. There's a moral vanity surrounding those who seek to restrict our rights to defend ourselves and our families. And I would say that for those that, uh, that are thinking this way, that are voting in politicians that seek to restrict our right to defend ourselves and our families, and it's not just for us, it's for our children and our grandchildren and for future generations. And it's up to us. We have that responsibility to be good inheritors of the rights that were passed on to us and we need to pass those same rights on to our children and grandchildren. We are citizens, not subjects, and we must, be, uh, we must remain uh, ever ready and vigilant to stay that way. Amen. Well, I can't let you go, Jack Carr, before you give your biggest fans a quick preview of your upcoming novel, because we're all waiting. It's the fourth in the, in the series. Give us That's a little right. bit. 
That's Just right. Coming out peak. April 13th, and it's really about what I thought about during my time in uniform and what I continue to think about as an author. And what has the enemy learned by watching us on the field of battle for the last 20 years in Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, and other hot spots around the world? What have they learned and what have they incorporated into those battle plans? And in this case, in my next novel, The Devil's Hand, they're ready to strike again. All right. We are patiently waiting. Look forward to that, Jack Carr. Thank you so much for being here today. We appreciate it. Thanks so much.